all of you to join us in our very first Simpang Chillax Kajurutran Besama IEM. For those who are one, wondering what is this uh, Simpang Chillax uh, Kajurutran, it is actually one of the IEM Meet the Public uh, sessions, yeah, uh, activities where we provide a platform for IEM members, uh, non-IEM members, as well as the uh, public to discuss on hot engineering topics, yeah? hot only on hot engineering topics. Uh, the activities will be uh, organized from time to time, uh, mainly on Saturday. Uh, from, uh, from, if we can uh, wait a bit, um, make sure. Uh, okay, right now, uh, we just got the uh, YouTube live. So we just got, probably you want to start again for the rest of other people. Thank you. Okay, all right. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Razad. Very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Salam sejahtera and hope all of you are doing well. On behalf of the Institution of Engineers Malaysia, we would like to welcome all of you to the very first Sembang Chilex Kajulutran Pesama IEM. For those of you who are wondering what is this Sembang Chilex Kajulutran Pesama IEM, it is actually one of the IEMs, um, Meet the Public session, uh, where we organize activities and provide a platform for IEM members, non-members, as well as general public to discuss on non on hot engineering topics, yeah? hot engineering topics. Yeah? Our activities will be conducted from time to time on Saturday, 2 p.m. Yeah? So um, follow us on our website so that you will know what is the next activities on this Sempang Chilex Kajurutran Bersama IEM. My name is Farm. Uh, I am a mechanical engineer by education and the current uh, horn treasurer of IEM, and I will be the moderator for today's session. As you mentioned just now, there are many other activities that IEM is organizing for uh, public, and, and uh, I'm sure uh, uh, some of you may be interested to know. And today, I would like to invite Engineer Yam who is uh, one of our council member to share with us what are the activities that IEM is, uh, is organizing yeah, for uh, public. Without further ado, I would like to invite Engineer Yam. Thank you, Engineer Farm. Thanks uh, to all the panel members and also uh, thanks to uh, all those who are attending today. Eh? Uh, today's event, as you know, is uh, this Sembang uh, Chilex. Uh. I, I like the word Chilex because it, it, it seems to imply that we are chilling out with the engineers, you know. I think that's what it's meant to be. Like. Okay, so, but uh, my job today is to, uh, uh, I have something to announce to all of you out there who have signed in. Uh, and this is in response to this Sembang Chilex event, which is, uh, I, I am actually chairing a committee that is called the IEM Meet the Public uh, Committee. Now, what, what is the meaning of IEM Meet the Public? I think for many, many years, the institution of engineers has been a bit of a backroom boy. You know? So we are never in the limelight. Uh, uh, we are only in the limelight when something collapses. Huh? So, so I think the... Uh, at the encouragement of our president, you know, I think we are launching this program called the IEM Meet the Public. Now, what, what does this Meet the Public mean? You know, it, it's going to be a free service uh, organized by the Institution of Engineers to help members of the public who need any advice regarding engineering. Everything that you can think of uh, in regards to engineering, I think we are all well represented in the IEM. Lah. Uh, but uh, engineers by nature are very shy, you know. So uh, what we intend to do is that you can uh, now actually look out for our poster, which is going to be uh, made available to various channels, uh, including uh, maybe the press as well. And you can actually contact the institutional engineers with your problem. And what we will do is we will actually... Uh, engage you with our members who are an experienced person in that field. Okay, like for instance, if you have a contractual dispute 
or you have a problem with uh, the utilities or you have a problem with your ch children's engineering education, you can actually write to us and we will, this IEM meet the public, we will respond to you. Uh, even under this pandemic conditions, uh, we will actually arrange for you to meet the relevant member of our institution who will be able to help you and give you the necessary advice. Okay, so it can be anything related to engineering. And I think uh, uh, this is not a short term service. This is going to be very much a part of the IEM DNA. And we are launching it today. And uh, I'm, I'm pleased to announce that uh, we, were, we, were, we were really encouraged by our president to reach out to members of the public uh, as our responsibility as professional engineers and also our corporate social responsibility. So uh, with that, I wish to encourage you all to look out for the poster. And uh, with that, I would like to pass the floor back to the moderator, Engineer Fao. Thank you, Engineer Yam, for the useful information. I yeah, hope all of you can uh, come to us if you uh, you have any needs, yeah. So, and we will certainly uh, get communicated uh, with you in a promptly manner. Uh, I was uh, make to understand that uh, Yang Bahagia, Yang Bahagia Tato Engineer uh, TS, Dr. Siti Hamisa Binti Tapsil, uh, the Ketua Setiausaha of Mosti and President of M Board, is also uh, joining us through um, uh, uh, YouTube. So, we welcome Tato. Right. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, that will bring us to the start of today's session. And the title, the topic for today, Chilex uh, Kajurutran Bersama IEM, is picking the right career in engineering professions. The topics may sound a little bit complicated, but it simply means uh, an introduction to engineering professions. As all of us know, STPM and SPM result have just been released um, in uh, June 2021, which is last month. I'm sure parents and students who have just picked up the results are busy in considering and making the most important uh, decision, uh, one of the most important uh, decision in the lifetime on which career or which line or discipline to proceed in their studies. Uh. So if you are one of the students that I mentioned or the parents that I mentioned just now and I totally have no ideas what engineering profession is, I would like to congratulate you because you are in the right forum um, to get a little bit information about engineering profession. If you are the students or the parents that I've mentioned and already have make up your mind very certainly that uh, uh, you would like to proceed on engineering profession, I would also like to congratulate you because this is a forum that you can pick up um, much more details on the details of each um, uh, discipline of the engineering profession. If you are one of those already in tertiary uh, education and you are wanting to know a little bit more on engineering uh, profession, we also welcome you. Yeah? So today, uh, among our means, we have invited four distinguished uh, panelists, uh, especially in wider because of a uh, different uh, engineering uh, background, uh, discipline, uh, background, and also the working environment. So, and uh, I'm sure uh, by the end of this session, uh, we hope that you will be able to get uh, more information and more details on uh, the different disciplines within engineering professions. Without further ado, let me introduce the panelists. Uh, of course, um, I was told we have to go through uh, ladies uh, first. So I will introduce engineer Rosmita Talib, who is a civil engineer serving in public services. Engineer TS Dr. Davika Naitu, who is a chemical engineer and currently serving as a senior engineer. We have engineer Razad Yagob, who is a petroleum engineer consultant and he is the founder of this program. Yeah. And we have engineer Yao Chao Fong, an electrical engineer and currently an owner to a consultancy firm. And he is our vice president for the activities within IEM. 
So of course, um, that is only a very brief introduction on NIM and so on uh, to let our participants understand a little bit more about our panelists. I would like to invite our panelists to give a very short, um, uh, I wouldn't say too short, probably three minutes about yourself, why, you know, uh, in which discipline you are in and, you know, uh, what education you have gone through, uh, whether it is a, a degree in uh, engineering or maybe you may have uh, a mean first and before you come to engineering and also your career. Can we start with uh, engineer Rosnita? Okay, uh, hi everyone. Uh, good afternoon to all the audience uh, who participate in today's uh, first Sembang Chileks uh, Kejutraan. Okay, uh, thank you uh, IR Farm. My name is Engineer Rusnida Binti Talib. I was born in uh, Kuala Pilah Negeri Sembilan, uh, married with one children. I graduated my first degree from University Technology Mara in uh, 2004. Uh, after five years, I continue my master degree in geotechnical at the same place uh, and graduated somewhere in 2011. Uh, now, I uh, after that, I joined, uh, I attached uh, Dewan Bandaraya Kuala Lumpur from 2002. And as a, I'm a civil engineer by profession, uh, my a, bit, a little bit about my, myself, uh, I, le I like puzzles be it uh, crossword, sudoku, kakuro, or any solving games, you know. And I really love treasure hunt because uh, when, I, when we join treasure hunt along the way from one place to another place, we always try to, to answer, to solve the clues and everything, you know, along, along the way to, to get the answers. And uh, I think that tally with the profession where we say that engineers always solve problems. That's all from me. Back to you, IR Farm. Thank you, Engineer Rosnita. And probably we will go to the, uh, Dr. Davika. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Engineer Technologies, uh, Dr. Davika. I am from Kelantan and I obtained my first degree in chemical engineering from uh, University of Technology Malaysia. And then I pursued my master's in engineering in the same university. I specialized in uh, environmental engineering. And then uh, I joined the industry. I was consultant for several years, various types of industry. And then I uh, joined the uh, teaching. Uh, I'm a lecturer now in uh, one of the university, private university. And I pursued uh, my PhD in uh, environmental engineering. So my research area is uh, uh, air pollution, air pollution technology. And I look at green technology and uh, sustainability and few other things pertaining uh, environment itself. Uh, I'm very passionate about uh, environment. Um, and uh, my hobbies is, uh, I also advocate urban gardening. And my hobbies is gardening. And also I do lots of traveling. Mm, and uh, uh, when it comes to yeah experience, I've covered everything. Yeah, I'll just keep it short. Pass to you back, uh, Engineer Yang. Thank you, Dr. Davika. So let's move to Engineer Razat. Assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera. Uh, thank you, Farm. Um, it's good to be uh, online over here with all of the guys. And I think uh, we got good uh, people from the YouTube live as well as on the Zoom. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for coming over. And uh, the reason why you all log in today is basically to learn a little bit more about engineering and why basically we are here today. Uh, so I think uh, hopefully at the end of the session, uh, you will get some idea on which kind of uh, engineering um, uh, areas that you would like to focus to. Okay, a uh, little bit about myself. Um, I graduated from the Colorado School of Mines with a petroleum engineering degree. Uh, when I took the petroleum engineering degree, I really do not know why basically I took that is my story. Um, I don't really know why basically I took uh, that. I, uh, what I know is that it is inside the list. It sounds interesting. That's why I checked the box of petroleum engineering. So true story. 
But uh, luckily, I made the right choice uh, of petroleum engineering, uh, proceeding with that, graduating with that, um, and entering the uh, industry, oil and gas industry. And I think, um, alhamdulillah, I made the right choice, you know. Uh, and plus also, I think it's the, the one of the most important thing about when you made that decision to enter any kind of discipline of engineering is to stick with it and to uh, proceed and be successful in it. So that's what the uh, session is all about so that we can all share our experience. Yeah? Uh, for myself, um, when I, uh, before I graduated, I got a job offer. Alhamdulillah, during that time, um, when I graduated, uh, before I graduated, I got the job offer already and I joined right after I came back from the US. Um, within the week, the same week that I came back, I, um, I started to work. So uh, probably that is not the case right now, but I think um, we can try to uh, talk a little bit about that throughout the session or in case there is a lot more questions that you have, um, we probably will do uh, engineers in the oil and gas industry in the future as well. So uh, hopefully uh, all of you can uh, go in and uh, come into this series of um, Sembang Chilex uh, bersama IAM so that all of us can learn from each other and share our experience uh, and encourage because this is part of the STEM uh, requirement of national requirement to actually have engineers out there. Uh, from the um, from uh, working, I think uh, after uh, 10 years of working uh, with uh, companies, I decided that I wanted to uh, do on my own. Uh, so I uh, quit my job and I opened up my own company and I sell just myself. Uh, so uh, I am an independent consultant. Uh, Alhamdulillah for the past uh, many, many years, <laughs> I have been a consultant and Alhamdulillah, uh, the, the rezeki is always there um, uh, and contracts that I get um, is always continuous until I will say that, no, I cannot do that anymore because, you know, I wanted to take time, some time off uh, and so on and so forth. I do not want to take a lot of time, but you will come back to me again, Fam, later with some of the sure. questions. We so I'll pass that. it back over to you, Fam. Thank you. Thank you, Engineer Razad. That we all see, you know, engineering and profession can be very interesting. Apart from uh, working as a profession, you can also start your own entrepreneurship. Yeah. So just uh, for all of you, if you have any questions that you would like to uh, know more, you can actually put into our chat box, and we will pick up these questions at the end, and we will provide the answer as much as possible. And next, uh, we would like to invite uh, Engineer Chao Fong. You? Okay. Hi. Uh, a very good afternoon to everyone. Uh, to, for those who are in YouTube as well as in Zoom, um, thank you, uh, the organizers as well as also IEM uh, for giving us uh, the opportunity to share um, with uh, school children as well as also uh, those who are very interested in engineering. Well, I was born in Malacca um, in 1978. Uh, you, you can know how old I am, I am now. <laughs> and of course, <laughs> okay, uh, of course, uh, I studied, um, I did my primary and secondary in Malacca. And of course, uh, I was actually admitted to uh, University of Malaya in uh, electrical engineering. Um, and I graduated in 2001 uh, as uh, in Bachelor of uh, Electrical Engineering degree. And after, upon graduation, I was actually uh, bonded by... Um, one of the public listed company, Hong Leong, and I did a year of uh, in, um, what they call um, what they call a uh, uh, career, and uh, of course, actually, uh, since I was wanted, um, I spent uh, one year in the uh, um, manufacturing line, uh, which is actually OIL manufacturing, doing air conditioning, and I was a QC engineer there. And uh, upon the uh, upon finishing my bond, um, I actually switched to uh, becoming an electrical engineer um, as a design engineer in a consulting firm where we design buildings, uh, especially in electrical systems and so on. Okay, And upon uh, obtaining my IR, I believe you can see most of us here with an IR. Um, what is IR about? Maybe we can actually explain later. Um, of course, uh, being a young engineer, uh, I was just like Raza. After obtaining my IR, I was thinking, well, there's time for me to maybe go to another greener pasture uh, where we can, I can set up my own firm and uh, maybe try out 
the entrepreneurship line. So I actually ventured into entrepreneurship, but uh, it didn't get uh, too well uh, for the start. And uh, things got bad and worse. So I went back to work and uh, also worked for someone. And of course, I tried out new uh, engineering. Of course, it's still in electrical, but uh, I've actually ventured into like data center uh, industry. And after about two to two, three years, I started to uh, be itchy again. And I wanted to actually try out again. I didn't want to really give up on uh, my first uh, failure. So I set up my own company again, I think eight years ago. And uh, up to today, I'm still there. And uh, uh, first, uh, today is also a sharing session about entrepreneurship, just what Raza has mentioned. Um, engineers can be also an entrepreneur, not only just uh, working for someone else. And uh, definitely, you can excel in, uh, in engineering if you have a passion for it. So of course, uh, why I choose engineering? Of course, um, it started way back in uh, when I was young. Uh, I always... Uh, look upon my uncle, who is actually an engineer, a professional engineer. And it is a proud moment to see how um, engineers do things and uh, how they contribute to the society. And of course, uh, doing something and like what Engineer Rosnida has mentioned, solving problems for people. So that actually create my interest and in, uh, why I took up engineering. And of course, engineers, uh, one more final word is actually engineers are not always boring and square, like what you think. Uh, we also have interests. Uh, like what uh, for me, uh, I like to travel and I also like to uh, watch sports. And of course, uh, these two days are a bit busy for me because Euro 2020 is there. So luckily, yesterday there's no match. Uh, so tomorrow I'll be busy with watching live <laughs> for the final. So once again, thanks. Uh, definitely, I will come back later with uh, more questions or even answers to uh, whatever you have posted. Thank you, Fam. Back to you, Fam. Thank you, Chao Fong. Uh, as you know, you can see all four panelists are actually from very different uh, engineering uh, disciplines and as well as the working uh, background. So, and of course, uh, along the way, uh, probably we can also share, you know, uh, what are the interesting uh, experience in forming the, uh, the own entrepreneurship or consultancy firm and so on. But for now, maybe the next question, as we all know, after the uh, STPM and SPM results were released, we have received a lot of uh, messages and so on, uh, maybe on uh, Facebook as well, on you know, the confusion. Some of the students, uh, they are, you know, really uh, needed some guidance or more inputs uh, for them to make the decision. Actually, for me, um, you know, when I finished my SPM, uh, I didn't actually have a firm decision uh, to pick up engineering as yet, like uh, probably like what Raza said. Unlike uh, Chao Fong, Chao Fong uh, from small probably already see the uh, Angus is doing engineering activities. Eh? Maybe, maybe we can share, you know, uh, from what time actually when we started to make decision, is it uh, during your school time or during your SPM time or even, um, you know, until now you are still, still not sure whether you're in the right field. Maybe we can go to uh, Engineer Rosnita. Okay, thank you, Engineer Farm. Okay, why, why engineering? Uh, I think during our school school time, right, uh, we have to list down the cheetah-cheetah. So I, I, I remember I put there doctor, pensyara, and penyanyi, you know. I'm not a good singer. <laughs> I can't sing. But that was what I put in the, in the list when the teacher asked me. He never knew about the engineer. Doesn't, doesn't trigger jurutra. What is that jurutra? Uh, engineer. Tak tahu, I don't know, katakan. Okay, so uh, from there, uh, I when after SRP, so you can guess my my age also. Eh? We, we are in the SRP, not the PT3. <laughs> okay, so uh, after SRP, I remember I uh, I want to apply a technical school, technical institutions. Uh, I call my teachers. I ask him, what is kejuteraan awam? Then he, he just mentioned, okay, something like maybe about buildings, about civil, about something. Then I just uh, click the, I just put up the kejutran awam and then I entered technical school in uh, Tuanku Jakfar Technical School Seremban. Form 4, Form 5, I've been introduced to the kejutran awam. Okay, uh, from there, I learned a bit about, mostly about buildings work in the syllabus from 4, from 5, right? Uh, plus the technical drawing. So we need, we need to know how to, to design a little bit and then do the technical drawing as part of the SPM questions. Uh, after, after SPM, I didn't continue my, my kejutaan awam, but I took architecture in the Polytechnic Umpu Omar Ipoh. 
somewhere in uh, 1993. So uh, I took uh, architecture, still uh, not, not really engineering. And then after two years, uh, three months after graduate from Polytechnic, still no job. And then I was thinking, I still try to, I was thinking to, to go to architect firm, you know, because architect student, right? Uh, so I want to go to architect firm to, to work. And then uh, my friends uh, say that, hey, there's a job as a site club in the KLCC project site. I was like, site club? Uh, okay, never mind. Rather than sitting at home, no job. So why not I try? So never knew what is the site club also, or they call it in the letter, Kerani Tapak. So I, I joined there. I my my first office was twenty by forty foot cabin, you know, at the KLCC site uh, somewhere in nineteen ninety three. So um, that is there. Uh, my project manager, I remember Mr Tan and Mr Lo. They taught me about the survey, the earthworks cut and fill because we are a subcontractor for for the earthworks at that time. So they taught me about civil. Uh, what is cut, how, how to prepare the claims, what is tender, what is BQ, everything I start from there. So in the meantime, I still apply for the job in the architect firm, you know. But after two years, I realized that maybe I have to let go architecture. There's no, maybe I, I, I have to make a decision whether, whether I want to continue looking for a job or I stick to this civil engineering. I mean, I told myself it's not that bad, it's not that tough. At that time, not that tough lah. So uh, I applied uh, 1996. I applied a part-time study in the UITM. I took my diploma uh, for about four years. Uh, from there, I learned more on uh, civil engineering. And in the meantime, I left the contractors. I applied, I, I joined DBKL. And I continue my first degree. So non-stop, part-time, eight years, diploma and degree. So I build up the interest from there. Uh, it's, not, it's not like, uh, no idea. I was like, can I do, I'm from architecture, can I do the civil? So if you have passion, you build up the interest, uh, you have the right mentor to, to teach you, to show you the way, what is the civil? And then, yeah, you can do it. So that's how I joined. I venture into the engineering part. Back to you, Fam. Fast forward to today, engineer Rosnita. Would you think um, you know uh, engineering is a interesting field, and you have made the right decision? Of course, I still have passion. With uh, okay, uh, I work in the government sector, but even in the government sector, uh. I attach with uh, civil engineering and uh, drainage department. So we do a lot of infrastructure there. And I, yeah, I love my works. Starting, uh, we are in charge of uh, more on the project, infra project, like uh, road works, bridges, you know. So from there, uh, I learned, oh, how, this is how uh, they, they built the bridge, you know. Because one, one day you, you pass by, no, no, nothing is up there. And then the next two days, eh, suddenly you got structure on top, you know. So how they put it, the structure there, that's what the civil engineering all about. You can see or you learn how they put it with the, with the cranes, with the beam launching and everything. It's interesting, you know, quite interesting. Yeah. That's great. I, I, that's great. I, 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 feel, I, I feel that I, I'm in the right place, in the right track. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. As we can yeah. see, you know, uh, Engineer Rosanita started, you know, to study uh, in architecture, then uh, have been given a choice and move into engineering. And as we see it until today, uh, uh, she is in the public service, but she's still enjoying yeah, every bit of uh, engineering from a building, from a construction and so on. I think that is a very good example um, that I've actually shared with us, you know, from the beginning until today. So maybe we can move to... Uh, Dr. Devika, what about you? When did you actually decided to be with engineering? Did you start from uh, kindergarten or did you only do that decision after SPM? Good question. From kindergarten right up to SPM, my parents have actually uh, uh, built in, you know, have been like singing the song that doctors are noble, you know, doctors are next to God, those kind of uh, things. So, of course, when after SPM, uh, my ambition 
from childhood was always to be a medical doctor. Um, I always uh, think that it's a very noble job. So in UPU, in, uh, I don't know how is it now, but my time back uh, after SPM, we have Borang UPU. And there are seven choices in Borang UPU. Choice number one to choice number six, I put uh, in as matriculation because those days the pathway to do medicine is actually from Asasi Science and Matriculasia. So I remember choice number one to choice number six was uh, um, all this matriculation in Asasi Science. And back in school, um, I'm a good student, I'm a straight A student. And uh, when it comes to physics, um, I always have that fear when it comes to physics. Okay, so I always thought that I'm not good in physics. So that's the reason why my seventh choice, I put in as chemical engineering, because the title there, you know, it says chemical engineering. Okay, there's no physics there. So I'm, I'm safe. So I, I put the seventh choice as chemical engineering. You know, sometimes your luck, isn't it? You know? you, I got the seventh choice chemical engineering, not even knowing that it's all full of physics. So when I got into university, uh, of course, you just take up the choice, the thing because very limited uh, options those days. Yeah, you just have to go with the flow. So I took it up. I went to university. Um, I was looking for chemistry. Yes, there was chemistry. Chemical engineering is a combination of chemistry, physics, and maths. It was like a chemistry would be twenty percent and uh, maths and physics. Uh, about 80, 85% 80, of uh, physics and chemistry, uh, I mean, physics and maths. At that point of time, when I was going through the, the course, I always had that fear on physics. And I realized that the fear was actually because of my surrounding. It was not because of me. It was not because that, uh, not because that I can't do it. No, it wasn't that. I was actually smart. I realized that when I was doing my engineering course, physics was uh, something which is doable. So do not get frightened, do not get uh, paranoid with uh, physics. Because why the fear that is uh, instilled in you is actually because of circumstances and situation around you. You know, so yeah, then I got in, I, I managed to complete my, uh, my degree with distinction. And uh, I was offered a scholarship to actually pursue my master's. And why did I choose environmental engineering and specifically air pollution? Because um, I'm from a little small town in um, in Ulu Kelantan, and environment. I was grew. Uh, I mean, I was brought up in a nice green environment. At that point of time, back many years, I knew that uh, the lot of damages that's happening on our surrounding and environment. I thought that I will be able to contribute something back. So that's the reason why I chose environmental engineering and specifically air. Reason why air? Water, you can choose to drink. Yeah, choose to drink or not to drink if I give you a bottle of uh, dirty water. But when it comes to air, we all can't choose to actually um, inhale uh, the air. We can't select, you know, we just have to inhale. So um, to ask whether whether I'm regretful about the choice that I've made, uh, choice that was not, I, I didn't make the choice, I mean, I was given the choice. I will, I'm not regretful because I, over the time, I realized that for a doctor to perform his duty, he needs an engineer from right from the stethoscope to the tablets that he's prescribed or to the MRI machine, CT scan, X-ray are all designed by wonderful engineers like us. So engineers are also noble. They are also, uh, they are there also to s serve the humanity. So that's why I don't feel regretful at all in the course that uh, I've chosen. Back to you, uh, Engineer Farm. I hope I've answered all your questions. Thank you, Dr. Deviga. That's great. Great to know that um, engineering is still your first choice at the moment. Yeah, that is great. Yes. So having heard, you know, the sharing from uh, two of our panelists, maybe I will go from different angles since I think um, engineer Razat and engineer uh, Yao has spoken when they roughly have the idea to become uh, engineers. Yeah. So I will pose another question to engineer Razat and engineer Yao. A lot of Allah, to question. 
<laughs> Ingat I dah prepare dah ke, <laughs> Nak jawab macam yang Devika and also Rosmida So tragic uh, Cerita-cerita dia orang Dan juga very inspiring From Devika as well So Ah damn Okay lah Ask lah question <laughs> Don't worry, you can actually join in in your, in your uh, answer as well. A lot of um, students, yeah, especially students or even a lot of uh, non-engineers graduate, they always said that to become an engineer is not easy. Yeah? Our courses, our, our degree or you know, the uh, courses that we have to go through, there are many calculations, there are many theory and so on. Can I hear from uh, Engineer Razan and then also Engineer Yao? What do you feel when you do your degree uh, program? Is it really that challenging? Or is it, um, if you followed it, uh, it is no issue? And of course, you can also answer uh, part of um, you know, the question that I posed to our earlier panelists earlier. Yeah? <laughs> Ask you, Engineer Razan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bob. No, I was joking. It's fine. Yeah, <laughs> I can always answer um, any kind of questions that you have. So, um, if we take a look at the engineering, yeah, uh, people say engineering is tough and uh, it's hard. Uh, actually, uh, nothing in this world is easy. Yeah. Uh, even if you want to not work, also, it your life will not be easy. So, I would say. If you uh, have an interest in a certain area uh, to become an engineer, then you should try to pursue it and take a look where actually it leads you. Uh, I have many friends who have taken engineering earlier. Uh, they wanted uh, to you know, do something else. Actually, to me, um, taking engineering course does not mean that you will stick to become an engineer. In fact, uh, that's the reason why we put together various kind of panelists over here. They, you know, they are not really uh, doing um, hardcore engineering work. Some of us are project managers, like what I'm doing right now. Uh, some of them are um, managers. Uh, some of them are owners of company, like what um, um, Chow Fong is. And some of them are teachers or lecturers like what Devika is. So uh, taking engineering does not mean that you do engineering work for the rest of your life. So there are certain parts of you, um, of your future, that you would go and do whatever that you love to do. And, and I think to me, um, taking engineering was actually the first uh, step for me to to have an independence and uh, to to know what uh, because we really do not know what we wanted to do. Sometimes when they, even some people, whenever that they reach forty years old, they wouldn't know what they want in their life. So I would say, engineering would give you that flexibility. You know, you can be whatever that you want because the training that you have in engineering being logical. Uh, being, um, you know, taking the courses which makes you want to calculate things to make sure that, you know, the probability of your, the success in your life is there. For example, yeah, I usually would keep one spreadsheet uh, in uh, for myself. Calculating, when basically do I, can I actually uh, retire? What do I mean by retirement? Financial independence. How do I want to get the financial independence? So you need to calculate inside there, you know, how much your income is and uh, your passive income until you actually get to where your uh, expenses will be less than your passive income. That's all there is. And uh, that, that is where we wanted to do. We want to make sure that we can do whatever what that we love to do. And that is what I'm doing right now. You know, uh, I'm helping people and putting together this program over here is one of the things that I love doing, you know, uh, helping out people and helping out people like all of you that is joining this session right now who wants to know what is it like to be an engineer. So engineering per se, I would say if you wanted um, an independence in your life in the future, and you want that uh, flexibility to in your career, then engineering is is exactly the area that you want to uh, to do. And how hard is it? 
I would say not that hard. Yeah, but I'm not a really good scorer lah. But then it wasn't really that bad because you know as long as you uh, work hard, and I am not that smart. I I wouldn't consider myself as a smart person, but I work very very hard. You know, uh, in in school, I uh, do all my homework and have a discussion with people, talk to my lecturers and all that. So all of this is very important uh, in your success. And I would say the communication is really important as well. And you know, um, and 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 it, you can see as we go along later, whenever that the questions that Farm will be asking later, we will go a little bit in terms of. What is it needed? What is needed for you to be a successful engineer? Okay, I'll pass it back over to you, Fab. Well said, Raza. I think I'm in total agreement with you. Um, that is a lot of flexibility. You have to become uh, an engineer. You can actually be specific in uh, design. You can be in general and project management. You have many options. Uh, but let's hear from uh, Chao Fong. Chao Fong, what do you find that during the education, whether it is tough and how do you feel, you know, the flexibility of uh, becoming an engineer, engineering graduate? Thank you, Fam. <clears throat> um, of course, um, when you ask me the question, is uh, engineering a degree a tough degree? Um, I would say yeah. it's not really a tough degree, um, being because um, we actually, when we, when we uh, enroll ourselves in university, um, there's of us a uh, theory. Um, you of course need to know the basic of engineering. Um, of course, the basic of engineering degree that you are in, like for example, electrical, chemical, uh, you need to know some formulas, which is actually uh, fundamentals. Um, at the same time, in university, uh, you are also given chance to actually look at the practical, where you do a lot of uh, lab, uh, lab uh, experiments and of course practical, as well as also industrial training. Um, this all will actually uh, increase your interest as well as also passion uh, to further uh, engineering uh, when you graduated. So in fact, uh, university, I think uh, in university, I always actually share uh, this. Uh, it's not all about study. Uh, in university, I will also encourage um, students uh, who, who get enrolled in university to participate in uh, social activities, like for example, joining the engineering clubs, and also other clubs that you have in the, in the university, uh, basically to also build up your communication skills as well as also your leadership skills. So I always remember when I was actually enrolled in UM, um, I think 20 years ago, uh, the first thing that I think of because uh, when I was in, uh, in primary and secondary, I was actually a very shy guy. Uh, I don't really talk and so on. So uh, then uh, when I get into university, I told myself I need to actually learn up uh, and first communicate and um, also network with people, which is why I was actually actively involved in uh, engineering society. Um, and of course, upon graduation, I continued to uh, be active in uh, IEM, I think just like all of us here today, where um, you see, uh, when, when you are in engineering, uh, you need to know um, your friends, uh, your network in engineering, and uh, mingle around with them. And this also sometimes will actually create more interest and also passion. Um, and of course, um, always also share this with uh, uh, friends and so on. Well, engineering is just not engineering. Uh, you could also uh, explore to uh, like what Raza has mentioned, uh, management, uh, entrepreneurship, and so on uh, upon graduation as well. So uh, it's all, um, and of course, the interest in engineering is all uh, um, always growing um, because of the technology advancement as well. Um, um, for example, um, um, I'm in electrical. Uh, there are always a uh, new technology coming up, um, not only in electronics or uh, even electrical or microelectronics and so on. I always remember when I first graduated in, uh, uh, in 2001, I don't have an email. Uh, I only started uh, using email after 2001 and then, um, and of course, I don't have, even have a phone. So you can see the technology advancements is there and not only in the, uh, the what you call it, in the way that you communicate or even you do engineering works, but also in your field itself. Now, I always remember I, I, I started with uh, designing engineering for buildings and so on. But now you see 10 to 15 years down the road, uh, you could be uh, designing automation system. You could be designing a renewable energy systems, which is all evolving. And this makes uh, engineering very exciting and not monotonous. And uh, you, you get to see new things coming up. And uh, when you advance and get older, uh, more and more things to learn. And which is why... Uh, the, and one thing uh, I'd like to advise the students is the passion and interest to learn new things. And uh, definitely you will actually be able to excel in engineering and also in, uh, any career that you actually choose later. 
So once again, uh, I think I uh, hope that I actually answered the question and uh, hope that you have actually uh, learned something today also. Thank you. Yes, wow. yes. Uh, thanks, uh, Chao Fong. Yeah, uh, like Engineer Yao said, you know, in the past 20 years, I still remember in early 2000s uh, when we come, um, actually the phone, um, you know, of course, uh, earlier than that, the phone is as big as possible. Yeah, and uh, during early 2000s, it's as small as possible. Yeah, and the cars and so on, you can see over the 20 years, uh, things have changed uh, tremendously. And engineering actually play a very important role whether it is in uh, transportation, whether it is in communication, whether it is in power. Uh, do you remember uh, when you were small, maybe you may have experienced one or twice a national blackout huh, in 1990s. Huh? But today, because of a different uh, technology, that is, uh, of course, a contribution from the engineers yeah, uh, and the en other engineering fraternity uh, that is made possible. Yeah, so don't... Um, you know, uh, worry about the education part. I think you have here from uh, Chao Fong and also Raza that it, as long as you have go through the program, you go to the study, um, you know, uh, and do whatever work that has been asked to do, you will not have problem of passing the degree. Um, the same question go to um, engineer Rosnita and Dr. Davika. Uh, what is your experience? Because you are from different discipline. One is civil, one is uh, chemical. How do you feel the degree? Is it really difficult? Maybe Engineer Rosnita, you can share with us. Oh, okay. Uh, it, actually, from the beginning, I was like, I, I'm scared of engineering because uh, malu to say lah. I never pass at maths and maths. <laughs> <laughs> but then, but then that's the key for the for the engineering, right? Because uh, that where. I, I remember this thing. Somebody come and visit us in the in the house, uh, in our house in Kampong. So uh, he asked me, uh, "What did you do?" I, I said, "I told him that I was a civil. I'm a civil engineer." So the first the first thing, the first statement, he told me, "You must be good in engineering. Uh, you you must be good in mathematics." I was like, mm, uh, mm, uh. <laughs> "But then, uh, don't be scared because we, yeah, as we know that from school we we learn mathematics." It, it's quite scary actually, uh, as, especially additional maths. I, I'm not sure why it's so scary, you know, that, that mathematics, that maths. So uh, when, when, I, uh, when I enter, uh, when I took, took my diploma, of course, the first round I failed uh, the, the mathematics, but then uh, we learn, yeah, we have to learn more and more exercise. Uh, take some some sifu inside the class. Who's who's good in that? Uh, so learn from him or her, you know. So uh, it can be challenging, but uh, after after sometimes when you think back your journey to get that diploma, to get that certificates, your degree, you will feel very satisfied because you you do it with your patience. You learn it in the hard way, not the easy one. Then you really appreciate your what what qualification you you got you know so like like uh, engineer Razak said nothing is easy you learn medicine engineering or accounting or lawyer everything is i mean everything is hard there's no easy easy way to to get something i right? uh, in in our life right not only in the engineering or in education in anything in everything in this in this world in our life so nothing is impossible. Just that you have to be brave enough to pursue. Uh, just move on, go on, try. Ah, uh, so that that's the key. You have to try. You, it, it's yep. it's okay if you if you fall once away in the uh, along the way you you drop and then you bangun balik lah. I mean, can you jatuh you bangun mm -hmm. you jatuh you bangun and then you keep on moving. You don't you don't turn your back. You don't pandang belakang lah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. For me. Thanks. Thanks, Engineer Rosnita. I I'm sure. I mean, there are challenges in every field. Yeah. I suppose um, when I first uh, look at the calculus, you know, when I look at the huruf huruf and uh, you know the symbol, and that is, uh, of course, it's a little bit um, uh, frightening. But I think uh, as you go through what is the basis, it, it is not that difficult. I'm I'm sure when you are in form three, when you look at uh, form five, and you will probably see. At maths are, are difficult, right? So, but when you are in Form 5, when we look back, actually, 
it is not that difficult as long as if you follow through, uh, you will be able to make it, right? So yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and Dr. Tavika, what about you? Have you found your, your degree uh, program uh, challenging? Um, I would like to answer the question um, with a joke. Now, Rosnita, I will blunder you, Tetare, okay? Don't get angry. So I, I, I have this uh, uh, lecturer. She's a chemical engineer, and her husband is a civil engineer. So both of them, they lecture in uh, the university that I, can't, I come from. So, uh, And I, I just uh, adore her. I adore her, but of course, yeah, I can't mention her name because this is like going um, uh, nationwide. Probably she's also watching it. Yeah, so uh, I really adore her. So every morning she would just walk in, you know, just to lighten up the class. She will always start this way. She said, do you know something? I ask you, I ask you all, you have to answer me. Which is difficult to control? Something that is not moving or something that is moving? So of course, we all of us innocently will say, of course, it is uh, to control something which is not moving. Now you answer me my next question. Which is easier to study? Something which is full of reaction or something which has got no reaction at all? Of course, we will say the one that's no reaction is easier to study. So it means at the end, of, then she will conclude her, her, her statement by saying, you see, we chemical engineers are much, much greater than civil engineers. So the conclusion here is that on that particular morning, she would have had an argument with her husband, who is a civil engineer. Yeah, not to put you down, Rosnida, but just trying to crack a joke here. I hope I, I make some people here laugh. So yes, chemical engineering is about um, studying a lot of uh, processes involved and a lot of reaction involved. Yeah, it is. It is not easy. Okay, but then how to how to actually uh, handle the the situation? Yeah, first thing that I I always uh, did to myself is that planning. Not all subjects will have to be completed in one semester. It doesn't work that way. You will be assigned subjects, probably five to six subjects, semester by semester. So you plan yourself well, plan the time well. And this subjects out of 100% coursework in SPM, we study for two years and we go to final exam and we regurg everything. Yeah, And then we will be given marks based 100%. But when it comes to engineering, depending on which university you go to, like uh, US has got 70-30, it means 70% is coursework and 30% is final exam. When you come back to Malaysian uh, university, I can't remember the percentage, probably it's uh, lingering around 60-40. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I, I think 60% coursework and 40% final exam. So what does it mean by 60% coursework? That 60% you accumulate in a form of project, um, probably group project, group assignments, tests, which is equally distributed among, uh, along the whole semester. It means before you sit for your final exam, you will be collecting about 60 to 70% marks already. So the final exam is the balance that, is, uh, that, that you need to score. So I would say that this is a very easy compared to even your SPM or your A-level exam because you study for two years and then you go for some exam which is 100% assessed. You know, so you need planning. You need to plan. You need to be very disciplined that every work, every week, you complete your assignment. Every week, you do your revision by, uh, by the chapter and you will be really fine. Uh, and of course, time management itself. When I was in the university, I was very active. I used to get uh, uh, associated with a lot of clubs. And uh, by me associating myself in the clubs, uh, I, I feel that my public relation improved. This is also a very important soft skill that all engineers must have. Public speaking, presenting yourself, you know, it's like uh, selling yourself. Uh, you must know how to sell yourself, not by putting a price tag on your forehead and walk around, that's not called selling yourself. The soft skill need to be also um, uh, what you call uh, 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 improvised in your process. So academic wise and also your, your, your character molding is what is happening in the university. And that I would say my university time was the most beautiful, least stressful uh, uh, life that I had compared to what I'm having now. So that is the training point. The four years was the training point, you know, um, the, where you actually train yourself to manage your time wisely, 
to manage your life wisely and seriously, you will do perfectly fine in all aspects near future. So once again, engineering is doable. And yes, chemical engineering is doable. Civil engineer is also doable. Even the tough electrical, mechanical engineer, mechatronic, everything is doable. It is all back to you. You have to answer the question whether you are disciplined enough, whether you will be able to manage your time wisely, whether you, you can plan. Yeah, for planning purposes, you can actually meet a lot of people. They will guide you. They will teach you. You can see some role models around you and you can just gather the information. Yeah, back to you, uh, Engineer Farm. Thank you. I hope I've answered Thank the question. You. Yeah, sure. Dr. Tavika, thank you very much for sharing the insight. I think uh, we all would uh, agree that uh, going through a degree program, it is not all by memorizing formulas and so on. It is not that difficult for engineering uh, programs. As uh, Dr. Tavika have uh, well said, it is actually a combination of coursework and also uh, examination. Yeah? So it is therefore uh, as long as you're following the assignment, following the projects, and uh, you know going to uh, going through the pathway, or sorry, the uh, teaching um, uh, closely, uh, it is not that difficult, according to all four of our panelists. And so, let us assure you, engineering degree is not that uh, challenging. Uh, I wouldn't say it's not that challenging. It's not that difficult as uh, uh, you have heard from uh, others. Yeah. So it is doable. Yeah. And of course, my next question is also a re very relevant and very important question. Yeah, Bob, I think, um, before you ask the question, I would like to address a little bit more about the, sure. question, the previous question. Sure, come. Right <laughs> then on, yeah. you can ask me <laughs> uh, the new question. Um, I think uh, about the co-curriculum, I uh, De Devika, you uh, put it really, really um, well over there. That is really accurate uh, description of why co-curriculum in butter. Uh, yes, co-curriculum in even in uh, in secondary school. Um, if you can join the curriculum in um, secondary school, that would be good. Um, I used to be a scout um, in Bomba in um, you know the business uh, clubs and so on and so forth. And uh, and I think those activities are those uh, are the ones that stick to my head right now instead of the one that I have in the classes. For example, if, if I were to go out uh, hiking whatsoever, you know, some of the knots that I learned from uh, scouting, it, it makes much sense. And even when I go to work over uh, offshore as well, I, when I see um, some knots that they choose to uh, put together in, on, on, the, um, on the barge, on the ship and whatsoever, I know those knots because those are the things that I have learned in school. So co-curriculum, is really good. It makes you want to interact with people. And um, it is really, really important that we interact with people uh, well. Yeah. Um, the one of the major things that we want to do is how you want to present yourself. I can tell you, whatever um, career that you choose in the future, if you don't have a good way of communicating, uh, I'm sorry to say you will not be progressing. Uh, you will not be good. You know, engineers, I can say that there are engineers who make very, very good amount of money. Yeah, I can tell you there are engineers who earn like probably six digits in a month. Yeah, this and is the important are, and, question that will come later. Yeah. Yes, yes, <laughs> I know. Uh, there, there are engineers who earn that much. Yeah, six digits in a month. Yeah, um, and there are engineers who don't go up at all in, in their career. So what differentiate between these people is your attitude when it comes to work. So I would say build up the culture even whenever that you are a student in school, in high school, be active, be someone who is um, attentive and be someone who you know, who, who is known, you know, sometimes you probably say that, oh, I will be the teacher's pet. Doesn't matter whatever people say. It's you who basically will be uh, taking care of yourself in the future. And uh, it, th there is no better time for you to start right now. 
if you are in the uni, if you are in high school or well, secondary school, does not matter. You know, start doing that in order for you to be successful in whatever that you want to do. Back to you, Farm. Question for me. Thank you, Razat. So um, the next question is uh, slightly related to what you have mentioned a little bit just now. And I think we have also seen this question in the chat box already. So basically, I think a lot of uh, potential um, you know, uh, students uh, to the engineering field may want to know, when they come out, whether the pay is as good as uh, compared to other profession or whether, you know, what is the prospect? Uh, maybe it will be a slightly lower in the beginning and what is the prospect uh, in the long run? Maybe Reza, you can share. I mean, since you have touched a little bit on that, and also the second question, maybe we can put it together as well. Eh, satu satu la. I cannot multitask. <laughs> well, you give me one by one. I, I will answer the salary part. Okay. Okay, no problem. Go salary, ahead. <laughs> salary, I would say it's very much um, in connection with your performance. If you are in the top tier, yeah. Say, for example, if you are in the top tier in your university, um, in, in your school, then good companies will grab you first. Yeah. When we say good companies, companies which pay a lot uh, for the starting engineer. Uh, so right now, starting engineer as what I, uh, I, I saw uh, people were putting in, it could be from uh, 2,500 all the way until 4,800 and so on and so forth. So, uh, you know, it, it can be uh, that, that range. And what determines that? It will be the company that um, that hire you. And what, what company that will hire you? It depends on how well you do and how well you sell yourself. If you cannot sell yourself, then I would say you better become the furniture in the office. Uh, I keep on saying that over to my students. I do part-time teaching as well uh, in one of the universities. And I, uh, I, I stress out to my students, you need to be at the top of your class. You need to be the best. You need to be, uh, you know, someone people will remember because if you don't, then you will be, you know, normal people. So in terms of the gaji remuneration, starting is, is that much, but it can go up really, really, really fast if you do really, really well, because whenever that you, you have to be smart, whenever that you go into your area, yeah, your engineering area, find out what is niche about your area. What is needed? Apa yang uh, orang akan um, fikirkan, you know, itu yang terbaik. Say, for example, in, in my area, I took petroleum engineering. It's practically a, a project manager who is good at everything in uh, oil and gas. However, what I did was I focused myself on drilling engineering because that's the toughest part and actually pay the best. So that is where I start my career. And that is where I focus on and also try to develop. And within the, the, the drilling engineering itself, there's also another part which makes me an expert in a very, very small area, which is data management of whatever that is going on over there. And I saw myself for a few years. And um, at the start of my career, I, 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 I don't have the confidence in me, but I jump into another company where in that company, I will need to be in competition with the rest of the world, global competition. And I found that I am much better than some of the Western uh, consultants and I can provide more value to my customers. And that is where the confidence will come in. And confidence is really, really important because when you have the confidence, you will sell yourself much, much higher and you will be able to actually gain a lot more selling. So don't complain whenever that you are stuck inside the promotion. It is within you to actually make those changes. Okay, back to you, Pam. That is a good sharing. So uh, I think uh, what engineer Razad is saying is that uh, if you go into certain area, the pay can be very good and rewarding and it can go up very fast. Yeah. Uh, so it really depends on the field that you are in 
And I am sure uh, Engineer Raza, when he comes to do the Excel sheet for his retirement, probably uh, the sheets uh, just need to be quite short, no need to be uh, that long. <laughs> okay, right. Let us move to um, Engineer Yao. What about um, your opinion, you know, whether the pay for engineers right now, especially uh, for uh, graduates who are entering the markets, do you think it is um, much comfortable compa compared to others? Well, uh, I would just want to compare maybe to other professionals, like for example, lawyers, doctors, or others, pharmacies and all that. I think our pay is actually equivalent to whatever they have. Uh, I think what Raza has mentioned, I think 2.5 to maybe 3.5 within that range as a fresh graduate, depending on what type of uh, projects or even uh, uh, engineering career that you are up to. So it, it very much depends on the, uh, the company itself. But uh, maybe I'd like to stress more like what Raza has mentioned. Um, the, when you graduate from university, uh, that would be maybe you have a starting pay, but uh, your career progression would very much depending on a few things. One is, of course, um, the, uh, the, what you call, uh, the way that you handle your job, day-to-day -day job, and the way that you progress after, uh, after you have joined a company. So you have to actually uh, um, work towards, uh, you have to commit yourself on a career, and of course, also try to actually improve and uh, do uh, because um, getting a degree is not just the uh, uh, the, uh, the stop of uh, what you are supposed to do as a in, in your career. So you have to move on to either take a, a further degree like masters or further education like masters or even certification like what Raza has mentioned. He has actually excelled or focused himself into niche market. So that would actually give you uh, a little bit advantage to compare to your other uh, colleagues or engineering colleagues. And uh, when when uh, employers see see that you have actually uh, done more than the uh, the same uh, engineer uh, colleague that you have, perhaps they will actually uh, give you a better increment and uh, of course a better uh, a career advancement as well in managerial positions and so on. And of course your pay will be definitely higher. So of course uh, for people like us in consulting or design firms, um, again, I like to stress IR is actually quite important to us because you need to be a professional engineer to advance in your career and be, uh, uh, be at that management level because um, that is actually important or even essential to some of uh, the companies because uh, that is actually going to advance you in the further uh, yourself in the career itself. So I believe, again, um, um, in, in terms of salary, I believe uh, when you start, that will be uh, the salary won't be... Uh, uh, much uh, much difference compared to other uh, of your uh, what they call um, engineering graduation uh, graded uh, friends but it's the progress when you grow uh, from then from the first year up to 10 years and 20 years uh, whether someone can be like what Raza has mentioned six figure or maybe maintaining it or just uh, three or four figures that very much depends on your uh, your way that you actually approach your career so uh, again uh, there are certain ways of course some, some may be lucky but if you look at the uh, conventional way, it's all about uh, additional qualification, additional efforts that you put in. And of course, uh, one more thing that I'd like to stress also, the networking as well. So, which is where, uh, again, like to promote uh, IEM, give you the platform to know engineers like uh, you, uh, the panelists here as well. In fact, my second job, uh, I actually uh, uh, I actually got my second job through uh, IEM as well because I was actually actively involved in young engineer section. So, a friend of mine um, actually introduced me to uh, my second job and uh, uh, which is actually where uh, the networking starts. So, I encourage you all, um, as an engineer, when you graduate, it's not just working. Uh, you also have to actually be actively involved uh, in society. Um, not only IEM, you can be uh, other societies or even social societies. And of course, also uh, the knowledge. So you cannot be like, um, uh, what I call, uh, what I call uh, you have to think out of the box. You, do not, uh, you cannot just uh, confine yourself to what you have learned in university. You have to grow. You have to always uh, uh, make sure that you are up to date in your career or even in your, in your field that you are in. And there is where you make the difference between you and your and other engineering colleagues. So hope that this will be good for you. For thank you. Thank you, Fang. Thank you, Chao Fong. Just, just to refer back to part of the conversation of uh, what engineer Yao is saying when he referred as IR. So for the benefits of uh, especially those who are not in the nose, uh, for those who have completed a, a, a qualified degree yeah, or a degree that is uh, um, recognized by um, 
uh, Board of Engineers Malaysia. And after working for certain years, uh, three years of minimum uh, related working experience, you can then apply to sit for a professional interview. Yeah, so you can then become a professional engineer if you pass the examination. Yeah, and that will carry a title of IR. As you can see, uh, all panelists are actually with the title of IR. And of course, if you want to uh, further to become a practicing engineer, you have to sit by another examination called PEPC. Yeah, uh, PC, sorry, so that you can become a PEPC, yeah? professional engineer with practicing certificate. All right just for the benefits of uh, the information. So let's move on um, to uh, engineer, engineer Farm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I just want to add, add something. I, I raised my yeah. hands already. Uh, yep. Okay, okay. Uh, sure, I would sure. like to, to add something uh, about the pay, the salary, uh, in terms from the government perspective, yeah? Okay. Yep. Uh, com compared to the to the private outside there of course uh, in government the the salary scale for for the engineers uh, will base will be fixed i mean it's already in the in the government guidelines so you graduate so this is your starting uh, starting salary uh, when you get promoted to a certain grade uh, okay graduate uh, you graduate you enter the government you will start with j41 okay uh, and then uh, maybe after few after few years, uh, you can be promoted to J44 up to J54, the highest for the pengarah or jusasi. Okay, what 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 I'm trying to say uh, is like uh, in the government, uh, the the salary is there, is the same to almost to everyone in the in the in that particular department. Okay, but like all our panelists said just now to make yourself value added okay you you still uh, you have to although the salary is the same but getting to to get promoted you you might want to add some value to yourself say like uh, getting the master getting a D, uh, getting the mba or phd or say like uh, pe pe or pepc like uh, i have mentioned just now okay that that will be added value to you when you you want to be get promoted okay uh, another thing is uh, although the salary is fixed plus the allowance and so on but that doesn't look uh, doesn't means that you you have no career parts you know you still if you if you want to pension j41 until the end so no harm go go for it i mean you you must have your your what you call it your your goal right okay uh, okay when i join the government okay another 5 years where i would like to look myself at another 10 years or just before re retired where would i be so whoever engineers in the government sector they, they should have that that what they call it uh, that patience you know to to always move forward you, that don't just static at that particular grade or that particular department don't just static there move yourself outside you know get to know uh, okay i forgot to to mention that I, i'm also an immediate past chair for women engineer section with iem uh, this is another way for me to to get a networking you know when i join the iem the women's engineers i i have a lot of networking now with ir farm ir raza ir yao and dr devika you know so that's where we we added our value there inside there. Don't don't just feel that okay. Uh, government fixed salary, uh, no challenging. No government also being engineer in government also. Although some people eh, that government always the clients. What what there is the challenges? But yes, there is a challenges. Uh, what no matter where we are, either the government consultant, contractor, or developer. Engineers always face challenges and we are there to solve the problems. Okay, back to Thank you, Alfam. Thank you. Thank you for that input, especially from the government sector. Yeah, I'm sure that part will give a lot of um, the insights into what is a pay, pay scheme. So, of course, we have here from consultancy, we have here from oil and gas, and we have here from public services. Maybe Dr. Davika can share with us, what about in teaching line? How does uh, engineers being rewarded? Uh, that's a good question. It can be also sensitive when I answer here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I was a consultant before, to tell you the truth, I was a consultant before and then I, I was in the industry. Uh, when I joined the uh, university, I, I took a pay cut. Uh, I went through a pay cut. So, um, yeah, of course, in the, even in the uh, university itself, you have challenges. You have to climb ladder. You will have to work, progress, get your qualifications, get your um, what you call professional uh, qualifications and move up the ladder. And uh, ours, uh, uh, we have to be active in research and uh, we are also allowed to open our own consultancy firms. So uh, yeah, that's how it is. So yeah? I hope I did thank not. You. Yep. No problem. I think Dr. Revika, you have shared a very good uh, perspective. Uh, basically what uh, it is, is uh, apart from teaching, yeah, you are actually allowed to do uh, a lot more flexibilities. Yeah, So you have to look at the entire picture rather than just uh, yes. Uh, yes. the part of the teaching itself. But, that is uh, very good. Yeah, but uh, when you uh, divide them by the hours of lecturing, it means the salary divided by hours of lecturing, but I'm very sure that mine is much higher than anyone. Yeah. That, yeah. 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 That's well, well said. I think most of us are in I some would like sense, to add a bit on, on that. Uh, um, <laughs> because I do a little bit of, uh, I do part-time lecturing as well in one of the private universities over in KL. Um, yes, the, 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 the pay for the uh, lectures, lecturers are not that high as compared to whatever that in industry. However, they are doing satu pekerjaan yang sangat-sangat mulia uh, you know, passing on the, the ilmu over to all of the students over there. And I uh, really, really proud uh, that there are lecturers over there who take that courage to do this job as a lecturer. Thank you so much, Derika. Thank you so much, uh, Engineer Raza. You just uh, made my day. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. I've seen a long list of question coming. Actually, uh, rather than we go through uh, another one or two questions, probably is good for us to address the issues that is being brought up by the participants. But before we move there, uh, I would also like to brief a, a little bit because um, uh, some of us may ask, you know, in engineering profession, uh, whether it is just limited to engineers. Yeah. So in engineering profession at the moment, of course, uh, they are. Uh, 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 white uh, value chains. Uh, you can be an engineers who are doing design, who are doing, um, you know, even um, implementation works. And they are also engineering technologies. Yeah? Of course, if you want to know more, you can actually refer to uh, whether it's IEM web page or whether it's BM web page uh, for the details of engineering technologies, as well as engineering technicians. Yeah? So I just wanted to let everybody know that they are actually a white uh, uh, value chains in engineering uh, professions. Yeah? So you can get those information. Uh, what are the requirements to become an uh, engineering uh, uh, technologist, technician, or engineers uh, through uh, the respective uh, website? Yeah. So let's move to the questions. Uh, I've seen a long list of questions. Uh, we have probably another half an hour to cover this question. Just go through very quickly. So the first questions. Um, interesting. Um, actually mentioned that. A nurse cannot work as a doctor, but companies can hire non-engineering students as engineer, non-BM registered. Yeah, where is the future for engineering students? What is BM and IEM doing to solve this? Wow, this is um, of course I believe uh, is um, uh, you know a question that the candidates, uh, sorry, the participants would like to know whether it is being regulated. Let me see who are the best uh, to answer. Maybe in this case, uh, Chao Fong, since you are in the consultancy area, maybe you would like to take these questions? Well, uh, in terms of consultancy, uh, design, um, design consultant like us, I think uh, it is a mandatory requirement to register the uh, engineers uh, with uh, BM before you can join us. Of course, normally there will be a grace period where sometimes um, the uh, degree is actually uh, uh, given later. So we actually uh, wanted our engineers to be uh, registered with the uh, Board of Engineers. 
So for us, it's definitely mandatory. And uh, we wanted all our engineers to be registered with the board because uh, that will also, uh, because part of it is also because uh, when you want to advance yourself in, uh, in consulting firm or design firm, in engineering firm, uh, you need to actually be a graduate engineer. You need to register. And the experience only started to be counted once you registered as a graduate engineer. So it's very important. And we do not want our engineers to miss this chance. Uh, let's say they do not register. Maybe after three years only, they want to register. So the three years experience in whatever they do in our company is not counted. So that would not be fair to them. So that's why we, when they join us, um, they, we actually wanted them to be uh, uh, registered with the Board of Engineers. So that is part of our engineering design firm. But of course, uh, regu- in, in, in the regulatory uh, requirements, I think uh, it is also a mandatory requirement to register uh, graduate engineers with the Board of Engineers Malaysia. Yeah. That, that is very important. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, uh, we would like to probably share that under the REA, Registration of Engineers Act, huh? Uh, it is actually mandatory, like Engineer Fong said, uh, if you want to practice engineering, you have to register with BEM. If you are caught um, as a, a practicing engineering without uh, registering with BEM, there are, le- uh, there are actions that can be taken by BEM. Yeah? So, of course, um, I hope all of you understand this. Yeah? And, of course, uh, another important point is if you don't register, um, you know, the years of experience that you can accrue to sit for your PI, professional interview, like engineer uh, Yao said, will be, you know, you will, you will lost those uh, important years. Eh? So maybe from the regulator perspective, engineer uh, Rusnita, what about, um, you know, do you actually uh, look at this, um, you, when they submit uh, drawing and so on for the approval of the regulator, do you actually need the certification from those uh, PE or PEPC? Yeah, uh, good good question, Ayafam. Actually, uh, in government, whenever uh, we have this uh, called PSP, that is a uh, professional professional submitting person, right? Okay, for you to submit the development orders, any any development in uh, in any developments, and uh, if you want to to apply any permits, uh, we do request a professional engineers to sign the drawings. To submit all the drawings, and uh, we will check from time to time. We will check those who sign the drawings or sign submit the document. We will check whether uh, he still he or she still registered valid in the in the in the board board of engineers measure. So we check because sometimes a uh, board of engineers measure they have a list that. Uh, sometimes suspended, uh, it's already, uh, what they call it, uh, it's already not in the list, uh, maybe pass away because we, we have, we do come across a case where the submitting person, the one who signed the drawings and chop, it, it's not a PEPC. Most, most of the time we ask PEPC, those IR with PEPC to submit and to sign the drawing. So we did caught uh, this one particular uh, application uh, they just use the, the PE only because uh, it, it's already stated there in the board. You Once you are only the professional engineer, the IR with PE, you cannot do the submitting. You cannot you cannot sign the drawings. So that, that's why in the government, we do check that. We, we do request uh, the professional engineers with PE, PC to sign and to do the submission of the drawings. Yep. Thank you. So in that sense, uh, in, um, you know, in... The regulatory perspective, actually, it is being uh, monitored and being regulated yeah, in that sense. Eh? So anything to add, Engineer Razad and Dr. Davika, on this topic? Yeah, I would like to add on. As for uh, my profession, being a lecturer who is lecturing engineering, it is, uh, it is a compulsory thing that uh, you must be an engineer. That is very important. And uh, if you're- Registered, uh, you mean, uh, Dr. Davika? Uh, you Registered must be graduated from, with your engineering degree Yes, and it must be from an accredited university as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's great. And as that's for great. A professional engineer, it is uh, not mandatory, but now it's. Uh, uh, I heard that it's going to be like thirty percent of the engineering faculty must be a professional and en- must be professional engineer hired. That's, that's correct. Yeah. Engineer Razad. Yes. I see uh, you thank you for sharing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, uh, from the oil and gas uh, industry per se, uh, 
uh, in the oil and gas industry, there are two uh, uh, sides over there. One is operator, uh, big companies like uh, Exxon, um, uh, Shell, Petro Serigali, uh, and so on and so forth. And also there's like a contractor, which is like Halliburton, Samba J, Baker, and so on and so forth. Yeah? And also uh, some other smaller companies like Uzmark, uh, lo local companies, Dialog, and so on and so forth. So those are two different areas over there. Uh, from the point of view of operator, yeah, um, those people that is hired by the operator, they are not really required to uh, be registered because when they come in, uh, they bring in engineer uh, or engineers who uh, uh, new graduates that, um, that, that, that uh, graduated with uh, an engineering degree, when they brought them in, um, the work that they ask them to do is not really design. It's actually managing the process. Yeah. So what they do is they manage the contractor that actually conduct the work. So the contractor side will need to have this PEPC uh, and also PE in order for them to actually uh, do the work. Uh, like uh, people from uh, Chow Fong's uh, company, they need to uh, be professional engineer in order to submit those documents over to operator. So that, that's the reason why in oil and gas industry, um, there's not many people who go out there and actually get their uh, IR or the professional engineer uh, title. And uh, in terms of the BM wanting to go over and uh, conduct this REA over to them, if you realize uh, it's only whenever that you conduct, um, uh, you know, uh, you sub do the submission, but you are not a PE. That, that is basically, uh, you know, what is benda yang salah. Yang dibuat. So that's the reason why uh, in oil and gas industry, it's not really, really uh, highly regulated lah. I would say, yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you. you, Bob. Thank you. So I hope we have answered the uh, question one. The second question we will also have to address to you, Razad, because the second question actually is asking. Probably you have uh, made the pipeline or oil and gas, uh, you know, sector so uh, interesting just now. So the second question is asking: Is the demand for pipeline engineer popular in Malaysia? Um. Okay. In oil and gas industry, um, it, it will be very lucky if you can get into oil and gas industry because that's where uh, the money is in. Uh, that's where the uh, activities is in. But if you are willing to work very, very hard, extra hours, and we are talking about sometimes working 24 hours, 48 hours nonstop. Uh, I have done that before. Uh, but it's not on a daily basis, but sometimes you just have to work really hard on some items. Uh, but um, uh, it, this is uh, where the, um, the challenges would come in. Lah. So whenever that, um, back to the question just now, what was the question again? <laughs> the pipeline engineers, is it yes, really pipeline what, engineer. is and what is popular? Yeah, uh, it is actually quite popular because uh, the the development is still out there for the uh, the building of new projects, and whenever that you have that, the pipeline engineering is still out there. Uh, probably later uh, we will have one series of this uh, Sembang Chilex Kejuruteraan with IEM where we will focus on oil and gas, and we will bring in uh, experts from each one of the field. For example, uh, the pipeline to actually talk a little bit about that pipeline. But I would say right now, um, the, the the pipeline engineering per se, it is uh, it is one of the major items that we have uh, in oil and gas. Yeah. Uh, in terms of uh, other uh, things, yeah. Uh, if you see any of the project uh, that we put out um, offshore, yeah, uh, it can be either pipeline or it can be FPSO, which means um, you produce it and then you put it on the tank and then the, the tank basically bring it back. Many of the uh, the, the current uh, projects are using that because they are uh, cheaper in terms of the uh, cost in the long run. 
So if, say, for example, the project is long, meaning that the platform is going to be there for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, just like whatever platforms that we have uh, over off offshore right now, then pipeline is the key. But if you have the project only like 5, 10 years, then probably FPS, FPSO is the, um, the, 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 the key right now. So uh, in terms of what you wanted to focus on a niche, I would say go into the industry, uh, get yourself attached in some of this area, get more input from the expert at which you can actually get from the IEM itself uh, when we bring in uh, more experts to actually talk about it. Thank you. Thank you, Engineer Razat. I uh, hope that provides a little bit of information of uh, the petroleum sector. And uh, I also want to share that actually pipeline engineer is not necessarily just limited to pet, uh, petroleum uh, sector. Yeah, uh, In a lot of time, when we come to design of a uh, uh, process plan, we also require uh, uh, piping engineers. Yeah, So I hope that have answered the question or if you have anything to add, uh, Chao Fong, on the pipeline engineer. Um, I agree with uh, what you have said in your farm. I think the pipeline engineer, not only in oil and gas, uh, there is also process in the factories. Um, there are a lot of, um, as you know, Malaysia have a lot of petrochemical uh, factories or even uh, semiconductor and all that, which actually uh, requires uh, piping engineers as well. And this is actually a, a field that is actually niche, but I think uh, it, it has demand in Malaysia because um, we are also doing a lot of manufacturing. Uh, and uh, I think not only in, in Malaysia, uh, perhaps also, uh, I think um, engineers uh, don't confine yourself to Malaysia. Uh, nowadays, I think you can also work abroad uh, in ASEAN or even in other parts of the world. So engineering is not confined only to local, but also overseas. So the opportunities are open to all uh, for those who are interested to, to be an engineer. Mm -hmm. Well said, uh, Zhao Fong. I think mm -hmm. uh, in IEM, we are actually promoting uh, uh, ASEAN engineering uh, engineers uh, as well as uh, APEC engineers and uh, international professional engineers. Uh, so if you have uh, go through IEM and attain this uh, member, uh, I would say this uh, college or the qualifications, uh, you are able to um, you know, move and work in other areas uh, easily. Yeah. So I think, um, of course, today we are not focusing on this uh, subject, uh, but to give you a little bit of uh, uh, information, if you want to know more, you can always uh, approach us yeah, on this. And of course, um, the, the, the third question here, probably I may want to skip it because uh, the uh, question is, if we are in a specific scope of work, for instance, uh, uh, in a traffic of transportation, what is the process of applying the IR and what are the requirements? I suppose we do have a um, workshop for professional interview from time to time because to answer this question, actually, uh, we may need uh, quite a, uh, uh, you know, uh, facts and so on. And uh, we won't be able to cover that in five to 10 minutes. Huh? If you don't mind, you can approach us and we can provide you information or you can join our workshop so that you will know how to actually uh, proceed on uh, the process of getting your IR. Yeah. And also, if uh, I may uh, interject, uh, uh, I am well, also do uh, have uh, what we call as the um, engineering uh, competency development, ECD, where we will help you uh, to become a professional engineer by providing you with a mentor uh, who basically will be reviewing your work on the quarterly basis, as well as your submission on the annual basis. So we do this for free in IEM as part of the IEM member membership benefits. Yeah? So come and join us in IEM so that we can help you with your career. That's, that's what we all do over here. We <laughs> want you to be successful in your career. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. Apart from uh, uh, what engineer Razad has said, uh, we also have structured training. Yeah? So uh, structured training is for those who are not exposed to design works and would like to sit for PI and you can actually go through this structured training yeah, as a pathway. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Uh, let's uh, move to the next question. I think this question, we will have to address this uh, to Dr. Davika. So isn't it more important to get students to study engineering from day one? Wow, this is um, a more a policy question. Um, motivate with lifelong employment. Maybe uh, Dr. Davika, you can share a thought or two. Uh, can you just repeat the question, uh, Engineer Farm? 
Uh, question is number four. Uh, isn't it more important to get students to study engineering from day one? I suppose what the participant is asking is why should we start engineering from uh, after uh, form five or form six, right? Why not uh, start from day one? Um, motivate with lifelong employment. Day one, what does it mean by day one here? I'm a bit not clear. Day one yeah. as in after SPM or day one of uh, school or? Let us assume it is from school because it's not, um, you know, really stated here. From school, you mean to say primary school? Yep, probably, um, yeah, uh, from the start of it, you know, it is already focusing on engineering. Maybe after certain times in primary school, rather than after you have go through all the common courses, um, all the common syllabus, then you are only uh, to pick and choose uh, what is the discipline that we suppose to go in the university. I hope this is the uh, intention of the questions. Okay, you 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 just have to make sure that I'm answering the question. If I'm not, just keep repeating the question. Yeah, no problem. As far as I, as far as I know, Malaysian education system, the uh, the channeling, the channeling of uh, the streaming, the streaming of the courses starts uh, from after your uh, UPSR. If it is still there, because they they keep like uh, uh, making it like chips more cookies. So I'm a bit confused whether you still have UPSR because my time was after uh, when it's twelve years old. Uh, then you, after you're 12 years old, you go into SRP and in SRP, still up to SRP, I think you do all the stream. No, sorry. You have science stream and art stream. The channeling actually starts from, uh, from four, whether you are in arts, science or um, uh, business. Okay, so this is where it starts. Even in science, uh, after form four, it, they are still not, not narrowing down whether it's going to be engineering um, medical or, or what you call uh, any any other science, actuarial science or natural science, they still haven't started. As far as my knowledge is, they only start after Form 5. Yeah. So to comment yeah. on the Malaysian education system, I think I do not have, um, I, 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 I'm not sitting in any board to give comment on that. Uh, but uh, when it comes to engineering programs sure. uh, in the university, we, the programs are actually designed and tailor made that we train them to be engineers, yes, from day one itself, to also like incorporate like what I told you earlier, the planning, yep. the time management, uh, the way how, like you see, when you are an engineer, you have to submit tender, you have to submit um, a lot of other paperwork, you have to meet your client's requirement, well, you bring back to the university, then it is like uh, submitting your assignments, meeting the deadlines of assignments. You know, most lecturers are they have they have uh, the stringent timeline to follow and uh, say just like trying to imitate what's going to be in the future uh, when uh, you are working as an engineer. Mm. Thank you. Uh, if I may add a, a little bit more uh, on what Dedika was mentioning. Uh, Raza uh, first, then uh, followed by uh, engineer Rosnita. Yeah, because both have. <laughs> 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 so more like, up, man. Okay. <laughs> anyway, right. uh, I just wanted to add a little bit on, on what um, Dr. Derika was mentioning. And I think um, in terms of going into technical uh, schools whatsoever, um, after the SRP, you are not, again, um, you always have like this um, vocational. So vocational uh, schools, they are, uh, right now, it's, it, it's like um, uh, when we look at education, again, uh, we look at, oh, uh, if, if you cannot go into Form 4, then probably you go into vocational school as a second class. But no, that is not the, 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 the whole purpose of it. And I think uh, we should all uh, have in mind that certain people, they probably like to do managerial work. Certain people likes to do um, you know, a lot more uh, in front of the computer. Some people actually do hands-on work. They love doing hands-on work because that, that's what makes them alive, feel alive in, in their life. So we, we want everyone uh, to have good education in whatever area that they are very interested in. So if, if you want to do vocational uh, later, you can go and if, say, for example, you develop yourself in the vocational education and then you go up and become engineer, that's fine as well. But if you want to become a technician in the future, 
that's fine as well because all of those will contribute to the nation's uh, progress, progress. And there's nothing wrong with uh, whatever career path that you wanted to take as long as you are contributing to the development of the nation. Thank you, Fam. Thank you, Razat. Uh, what about your inputs, uh, Engineer Rosnita? Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, first, I would like to answer uh, from, from government perspective. Okay, uh, I think under Musti, Mestek, Higher Education Ministry, they have this uh, called STEM, right? STEM program, STEM unit right. and so on. So that's where they, they are looking at from the government side, they are looking at uh, how to, to approach these uh, school children, whether primary, scan, secondary school, to, to attract. To uh to interest to make an interest uh into science technologies and engineering you know okay uh in in the IEM perspective uh in the IEM perspective uh where I under women engineers section that that's where uh in our activities we activities we join event with this ministry uh angka uh, what they call it, uh, agency nuclear Malaysia to say to name a few. Uh, we did have uh, uh, an event uh, called Minggu Science Negara under Mosti. It, it's run every year, so we always uh, join support that uh, Mosti program. Uh, in that particular program, we introduce about the science, the engineering to the secondary. We conduct a contest, a video. A, a, something like uh, more to STEM level, you know, from, from beginning, I mean, from primary school. So that's what we did in the IEM, in the women engineers in particular. So that's the activities. It's just that to, to measure what is the success rate, okay? Uh, we, we already approached them. We try, we arrange so many programs to attract the children, the, the primary, the students to get involved in STEM and to continue in engineering. Uh, so we are we are currently women engineers are currently doing a research to know uh, from the beginning what is the rate success rate uh, how how we want to keep them uh, from the school up to the careers level they still maintain the engineering if they left we will we will be asking why they left what what is uh, so wrong with the engineering that they left the engineering field so hopefully by next year we can we can produce this uh, research result then we can share among others lah. Okay. Thank you, Engineer yeah. Rosnita. So there are already yeah. certain elements that is being uh, inculcated or put into primary school, uh, so to speak, during certain uh, weeks. Uh, for instance, uh, in this case, is a uh, mosty, um, you know, uh, and we also have a uh, hari uh, uh, profession, Taneko, Malaysia, and where the similar things has been put in as well. I suppose, all in all, there are also certain foundation need to be built into, uh, you know, the students before they pick up, yeah. Whether when, when they already attain the foundation, they can pick up to be either an engineer or technologies or technician, uh, depending in the areas of interest uh, of the individual. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Um, we are at uh, 3.43. We have another 10 minutes, um, probably. And uh, another question, this is a, a little bit technical question. Can share experience on how engineers protect their credibility working in a project? in terms of complying to client requirements that doesn't follow with what specified intent? This is a very consultancy perspective, right, Chao Fong? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> would, would you take this or would you want to? Yep. Uh, yeah. yep. Maybe I'll just have a quick one because since we have only 10 minutes, I think uh, yeah. this question is about um, how engineers protect their credibility working in a project. Um, I think uh, when we graduate as a uh, graduate engineer, uh, especially uh, uh, fresh engineers, we are always educated with uh, engineering ethics. And of course, uh, we, have, um, we have to undergo a lot of like, uh, courses as well as, well, as, well as also uh, experiences. And all these would actually uh, lead to us uh, knowing the requirements. Um, and of course, what are the, uh, what are the um, requirements to be an engineer? And we actually have to follow all the requirements that is actually specified. So, and of course, when we go for our professional engineering uh, uh, exams and all that, uh, all these are also part of the uh, uh, requirements and uh, we have to actually sit for the essay questions and of course, undergo trainings on ethics. So I think all these would uh, 
uh, are in place and put in place by the board of engineers as well as also uh, the institution to educate uh, the engineers in uh, uh, ethics uh, of uh, performing our duties as an engineer. So I think uh, this will be uh, in place. At the same time as well, uh, the board also has the uh, committees and of course the professional practice committees and so on um, to undertake uh, any complaints from the public uh, regarding the, uh, the conduct of engineers as well. So uh, I believe uh, these are some of the measures. Of course, um, there are of course other detailed measures, but of course these are just a general uh, requirements and measures that uh, we take uh, to uphold the uh, image and of course the integrity of engineers. Thank you. That is um, very good uh, inputs on this. So, uh, if is there any other inputs from the panelists? If it is not, then we move on to another question. No. Okay. Let's move on to this question. I think this question I have to address to you again, <laughs> Chao Fong, because oh, okay. basically it is asking if I am pursuing my studies in electronic engineering course, can you share with me what kind of job I can apply? Okay, uh, again, uh, <laughs> okay, electronic engineering course. I think uh, in general, um, electronics touch about uh, um, the uh, usage of uh, IC circuits, uh, the integrated circuits, PCBs, and of course, uh, some may also uh, uh, indulge in like telecommunications and automation. So uh, the jobs that is actually uh, people are looking for when you graduate uh, is a plenty. Like for example, in semiconductor, uh, where you can do design or uh, go into the production lines and so forth, and maybe R&D as well. And this is a very, uh, what you call, uh, advancing um, um, engineering um, uh, field where things are evolving. Like I have actually mentioned earlier, um, you can actually be looking at uh, artificial intelligence, AI, you could be looking at automation, IoT, Internet of Things, and so on. So uh, a lot of like upcoming jobs are actually based on this as well. As you know now, uh, we are actually living in a, what I call a, a confined world because of COVID. So a lot of things are more on telecommunication and how, how we actually communicate with each other, although we are not present in, in uh, physically. So this would actually help and of course uh, further advance the uh, electronic field and of course uh, the potential are very uh, vast. And in fact, uh, because I'm in uh, this field, uh, of course, uh, electronics, I think a lot of career opportunities are there in electronics. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Engineer Yao. So in a summary, congratulations. Uh, your work prospect uh, is quite wide, uh, I think as described by Engineer Yao. All right. So the next question is a little bit more general. So I will address it um, to uh, probably the other three panelists since uh, Engineer Yao has been busy answering the last two questions here. So this question is said, um, Engineers start with a paper qualification, but sad to say, based on my observation, most of them do not progress beyond what will be the panelists suggest to motivate them to learn more. Well, it's a general question, you know, how do we motivate them to work more and so on? I see Razad already opened the mic, so I will pass to Razad first. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Uh, I think uh, it is very important that all uh, engineering students out there or uh, students out there who is um, aspiring to become an engineer, um, uh, please do not think that uh, SPM is the last item to prove yourself because you do have a degree to go in. And after you, your degree, you probably would want to take your MBA ke MSc ke, and probably you want to become something like um, uh, Dr. Devika to do her, uh, her PhD. You know, that, and also for people who do not go over there, for myself, for example, I will still need to go and do, um, you know, uh, the PMP, which is a professional um, project manager professional, um, because that will elevate myself. And also, I will need to study to, to, to do my professional engineer. So as an engineer or any other uh, uh, career, it, you, you never stop learning and you never stop trying to go the next level and the next level and the next level. Even if you become a doctor, for example, in medicine, you still want to become your specialist and so on and so forth. So your, your study will never, never stop. You keep on learning. And in fact, that's the reason why IEM is still here. It's because we develop 
engineers who are already in the industry and develop some of the skills that they have, sharing of ideas, sharing of information. What I uh, I just did last uh, February was uh, coming up with the uh, talk that uh, talk about the uh, a talk that uh, focuses on um, my experience doing a project uh, during the COVID nineteen, which is really really hard. You know, when I was uh, over in Labuan during this COVID time and trying to bring people into work on a project because offshore uh, projects does not stop because of COVID. So how do I do that? And th- this is why I'm saying uh, a lifelong learning in engineering is always there. So don't stop to think that you you know you you after this your your co- your life would be just coasting. And that's differentiate between other engineers who did not go up the ladder versus all of us, all the panels over here, who is very, very inspired as an engineer over here and sharing our experience to all of you. So I hope uh, adik-adik, anak-anak yang di luar tu, be inspired to become an engineer so that you can uh, you know, uh, work for your nation. Thank you. All right, thank you. I think we are really running short of time. We have another, now it's 3.51. No? We can only take another two questions, uh, probably. I or maybe just a very quickly, yeah, Dr. Tevika, you have something to say on this topic? Yeah, I'll, I'll just make it very uh, short and sweet, just to add yeah. on to what uh, Engineer Raza said. It's about answering whether you have your burning desire to come up in your life. Or not. It's your choice. Whether you want to just be in the position that you are, or whether you look at yourself 10 years to 20 years down the line, what you want to be. That's what you should, uh, you, that's what should inspire you and keep you going forward. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yep, thank you. Uh, any, any, any other panelists would like to add? Yeah, Engineer Rosnita. Uh, okay, I, I would like to add about the life uh, long learning process, yeah. Okay, for me from the government sector, uh, as a client uh, and as a doing infra works only at our at our department. So uh, for me to get the lifelong learning, uh, maybe I will join another like IEM. We have so many technical division like chemical, highway, and everything project management. So to for for me to get that knowledge, since I'm not at that particular field, so I join the IEM webinar. So uh, here. I'm inviting those who wants to know more, who wants to learn more about to enhance your knowledge. Maybe you can you can go to our website IEM and then we can you can go through all the list of the events now because we have lots of web, webinar to 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 apa, uh, to show to the others. So just go through IEM webinars and take just pick whichever webinar that you like. Okay, thank you. That's great. I think in a summary from all the panelists, I think number one is your attitude. Yeah, I think uh, it is very important to have that attitude to keep advancing and upgrade uh, yourself. Number two, I think in uh, uh, I think we have also touched. Uh, IEM provide a very good platform. Whether it is through uh, getting gaining uh, more knowledge or latest update on the technology, as well as uh, networking, as uh, you know, as well as um, the communication skill, for instance. I think all in all, uh, come to IEM uh, if you are uh, the person that we have described earlier. Huh? So this is an area for sure for you to grow yourself. Okay, uh, let's uh, move on very quickly. I think question number eight and 10 are about the same, asking the panelists to provide what is the greatest uh, uh, contribution you have done to the nations. But I suppose this is a very sub- uh, subjective question. I think all of us have... Uh, contributed in uh, one way or another, whether it's a big project or whether it is by teaching or by government uh, service and so on. So I probably won't touch into the details of it. Let's um, go to the next one. Um, when the participant mentioned that I'm interested in EEE, and I suppose it's a e, uh, triple E, lah, eh? and CE, I suppose it's a civil engineer. I will fail a medical test for a driving license, but I could drive just fine with my vision. Can I still be an engineer? I suppose uh, the participants have some issue on vision. Yeah. So, um, well, any panelists would like to take if, let's say, there is some vision <laughs> issues, uh, maybe it's a color, I think in this uh, case, uh, uh, whether he is oh, qualified okay. to be an engineer. 
maybe uh, I'll just oh maybe I'll take a quick one. Uh, yeah. it's, it's just uh just a quick one for electrical engineers. You do not have issue. Even the global has changed because of this issue. Because uh, we used to have red, yellow, blue for wiring. Now it's actually changed to a color that suits the uh color uh, visionary we have visionary visionary impact uh people. So that uh we have now uh um the different colors to. To, to actually uh, put yourself to be uh, able to actually be practicing electrical engineering uh, for cable wiring. So I think um, for, for engineers, I believe there's not much of issue of uh, vision, visionary impact or color uh, impact or so on. Uh, it's the passion and interest. I think uh, the employers would definitely, if you are good and you have, have the interest, I think uh, most of the employers would actually accept you and of course know your weaknesses or even your impairment and definitely would uh, accept you to be an engineer. So I don't think there is any issue on that. Uh, uh, I am colorblind. Uh, yeah. Everyone, <laughs> oh. I am colorblind, <laughs> actually. Uh, so I am medically <laughs> uh, colorblind, uh, but uh, in, 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 in my line of work, um, okay. so colors is very important. So if you see um, uh, all of our applications whatsoever, it, it comes up with, with a model, geological model, where it focuses on colors. Um, color of uh, red will signify is a gas, green oil, and then blue as water. But uh, I wouldn't say that uh, my impairment as the uh, colorblind person uh, has any issues with that. Um, and um, I, I never have any issues with that. And it is actually uh, listed as one of the items in my medical uh, and it is shown to my um, employers and whatnot. So, uh, no, it will not uh, have any issues whatsoever. Um, I just would like to um, stress out a little bit in terms of back to the questions of um, lifelong learning and what IEM can do. Um, IEM, other than the webinars that we actually have on a weekly basis, you know, we have webinars every Saturday as well as on the weekdays. You can join any of the webinars and we do also have the ECD as I mentioned earlier and we also have the library, online library as well as physical library that we have uh, downstairs in the dungeon over there. I do not want to talk a little bit anymore about the library, physical library, but the online library is actually quite excellent. Uh, it is almost as good as the library that I have uh, when I was uh, doing a part-time lecturing where I have um, uh, access to the library of the universities. So uh, please do check out on uh, whatever that I am can actually provide you. There's a lot that you do not know, come and join us. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have three minutes left and let's take the last questions. So all the panelists probably can chip in and give a brief you know, opinion. With current trends in technology and innovation, the past 10 years in Europe and US is moving towards sustainable, renewable and alternative energy. What about Malaysia ecosystem? Are we moving towards that? Should the students still choose a safe path, i.e. chemical, electrical, and civil? Yeah, now you know chemical, electrical, and civil is uh, yeah, uh, whether uh, your encouragement is for them to stick with this line or should the new generation take up a more challenging and uh, discipline to elevate Malaysian engineering to a new height? Maybe we go by the orders uh, from the start, probably Engineer Rosnita. What is your view on this? Whether should stick with the safe or the major discipline, or if there are something new, for instance, uh, uh, solar or you know something else, should they also go to those okay. specific areas? Okay, uh, in civil engineering, uh, although some people said that engineering field is a sunset business, but I believe that uh, the government also now go towards digitalization. We also go on the IR 4.0. So even in the civil engineering, maybe some part of them last time we are doing it manual, but now we are go towards that. We we include the sustainable uh, uh, sustainable what uh, element inside there, the resilience, the whatever the SDG from one to sixteen. All we try to include in the engineering where it's appropriate. So it is not that uh, when we said civil engineering just static there. It moved. It moved along along what the new technologies uh, 
have come now. So we are we are moving forward also. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Doctor Devika. Engineer Farm, do you mind repeating the question again? Uh, so basically, the participant is asking uh, whether, in our view, uh, the student should pick um, uh, the uh, traditional uh, safe uh, discipline like civil, electrical, mechanical, and so on, uh, or if there are new discipline, uh, for instance, a new trend uh, going towards uh, maybe uh, renewable engineering, whether uh, they should be encouraged to go specific in those areas. Uh, my opinion is that uh, your job scope is like an inverted pyramid. So the basic degree should always be broad spectrum for job hunting purposes, because you want to ensure that uh, you, you can uh, secure a job in the future. But in your first degree itself, there, there are optional papers, there are elective papers that you can actually specialize in the, uh, in, in the area. Yeah, so that's how it's supposed to go. And when you do your master's, you, you can narrow it down even further, like what I've done. So uh, like me, my, my, uh, my master's is one of the subset from the chemical engineering itself. So why I'm advising it to stick to the traditional, but taking in elective uh, papers is so that your job hunting becomes much easier because you are uh, in a broad spectrum. If you have narrowed down, it means if you are a tip of the pyramid itself, then you may be a bit difficult for you to go into your job hunting, yeah? But no matter what field that you take, you must, must get yourself exposed to artificial intelligence, um, all this latest uh, thing, you know, on ANN, fuzzy logic, and uh, you must get yourself exposed. You must uh, do coding. You must learn uh, programming. And uh, because all engineering fields, not only engineering, a lot of other fields, they have incorporated AI uh, into the field itself. So do embrace the technology, do move on with the, uh, um, what do you call, the evolution, that the involvement that is happening now, like, like your smartphone itself, it's, it's full with uh, AI, right? So if you, if you don't embrace this, you will be lost and you will never progress and you will just, just get stuck in that place that you are now. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Davika. What about uh, Engineer Yao? Hey, you, how Rafa. about me? <laughs> Raza first, Raza first. I'm following the order of my screen. <laughs> go ahead, Yao, and then I'll let, let, do the okay. probably engineer okay. Yao to... Yeah, sure. I, I believe uh, the question is on uh, sustainable development as well as also how it relates to uh, the normal uh, engineering field like chemical, electrical, uh, chem civil, and per uh, mechanical per se. I believe it's actually interlinked and interrelated because I believe uh, currently all the uh, various um, normal uh, engineering field like electrical, uh, chemical and so forth, uh, there are elements that is actually uh, related to sustainable and uh, you have to evolve to, uh, to, to actually uh, include that into uh, uh, your career. So which is why I believe uh, some of you may have heard of it. Um, in fact, uh, every year, March 4, uh, is actually uh, declared as the World Engineering Day. And this World Engineering Day is about World Engineering Day towards sustainable development. So which is not uh, only confined to you want to do sustainable engineering or so, but it's actually uh, open, uh, it actually encompasses every engineering field. So sustainable development is for every engineering field. And definitely, uh, if you are into engineering, you'll definitely be involved in sustainable development. So that's my, uh, that's my call for uh, this particular subject. Thank you, Chao Fong, yeah. of course. Mm -hmm. Uh, Engineer Razad, your view is also very important. Um, I think I am the odd one out uh, out of all the panel uh, because uh, my degree is in petroleum engineering, which is actually quite a niche uh, in the area itself. Uh, petroleum engineering falls under the category of chemical engineering. So uh, we, we have uh, civil, we have uh, mechanical, electrical, um, uh, the uh, chemi chemical electrical and then uh, what else sir? mechanical mechanical, uh, mechanical. yes chemical yes uh, so uh, i am the petroleum engineering which means uh, it is a uh, very um, uh, niche in, in in the market so in terms of the is it better to be in a generic engineering or a specialized in certain areas it's really really up to you if you are willing to work extra hard to be um, the best in your area, 
then you can be successful in a niche market or else you can be in the other, um, the, the major ones at which the uh, work is, uh, is much open for you. And in oil and gas industries, uh, we still uh, hire uh, people from mechanical, electrical, um, chemical, civil, all of that uh, is a, a apply over in the oil and gas industry and not just petroleum engineering per se. So uh, regardless of whatever your, um, uh, your, your discipline later, uh, you want to stress out to be, uh, to learn as much as you could and learn not just for the great self, but to develop yourself and to make sure that you know what you are doing. Because as an engineer, we have a big responsibility to ensure that our work is professional and it because we deal with people's life um, every day that I work um, I go out I wake up in the morning I want to make sure that the guys over offshore is alive and none of the things that work that comes through me has any issues or anything that uh, you know that, that that can jeopardize their life so uh, you know, take responsibility of your career in the future because no one else will. Uh, HR in your company will not do that, but it is you yourself who will figure out what you want to do with your life. All right, thank you. Thank you, Engineer Razad. Uh, because of time constraint, we will have to apologize to all the uh, um, participants for posting the other question. Um, but uh, uh, rest be sure that uh, this activity is... Uh, 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 will go on from uh, now until probably every month uh, there will be one or twice. Uh, please follow us on the activities on the our website so that you will know what is the next topic. And of course, uh, please stay put uh, for us to take a photo. But uh, before that, I would like to take this opportunity to uh, thank, um, of course, um, uh, Yang Perpahagia KSU Mosti for staying uh, uh, participating uh, in this uh, 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 program uh, through YouTube, as well as we'd like to thank uh, BEM for supporting this event, as well as uh, standing committee for uh, CA on CA, as well as activities for making this possible. Um, the XCOM led by the president and the deputy president, and of course, um, not forgetting the secretariat that making these uh, events possible. And last but not least, uh, the most important, of course, uh, the panelists, uh, four of the panelists, as well as all the participants. Yeah? I'd like to thank you all for your time for participating in this event. And please uh, stay put. And uh, as the uh, Secretariat have asked us uh, to uh, put our photos on so that we can take a, a photograph. Yeah? If all of you are fine, probably you can just uh, put on your uh, video or your uh, camera so that we can take a group photo together. Thank you all for joining the session, yeah? Yeah, so one, maybe, yeah. Uh, Ani, are we all right? All right, one, uh, two. Uh, wait, uh, engineer farm. Yes. Uh, the participants can't turn on the video because uh, it has to be enabled uh, to them. Okay. Uh, how do we do that? Um, honey, um, yeah, there are comments that, that they cannot open. Eh? So, Ani, can you um, allow them to switch on their camera? Okay, Ani is saying he's getting it. Now, please bear with us for another one or two minutes. Yeah. So that at least we can have a, a full photograph of everybody. Yeah, are we okay? Or oh, are we waiting for that? Uh, is the panelist ready to take another question? <laughs> All right, good. We we'll see Engineer Sukairo. You we'll see Mr. Lim. Yeah. Okay, good. All right, great. Oh, wonderful. That's great. Okay, Engineer Zugifri, you may need a little bit of light. Sir.
Mr. Arif Shah. Yep. All right. Are we fine? While we are taking are pictures, pictures, while we are taking pictures, make sure uh, join us on the next series of this uh, Sembang Chilex uh, Kejuruteraan bersama IM. Um, if you uh, have, thank you all for the support because with your support, that's uh, when we want to do the next uh, series as well. Uh, next series probably we will bring in uh, a lot more interesting uh, topics uh, to talk about. Uh, we want to do a little bit more on the oil and gas. Uh, we want to do a little bit more on the technologies as well as the technicians and engineers and so on and so forth. So do stay tuned uh, for our next um, event uh, on the Sembang Chilex Kerujuretaan bersama IAM. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Razat. Yep. Follow us on our website. You will get the details. Yeah. Well, when is the next event? Yeah. All right. Um, Ami, are we done? Yes. Everybody ready? Okay. okay. Get ready. Get ready. Yeah. Okay. One, two, three. One more. Ready. One, two, three. Thank you. With that, thank you very much and I'll see you all in the next round. Stay safe and uh, meet again soon. Thank you. Everyone. Bye. Thank you.